Hello and welcome to the next league match for the highway to the Zima Zone. Today we have four great racers, uh, Rex Roll, Woo Bear, Gaming with a Wraith, and Mouth SO. It looks like we have ourselves a Rosa start. For those of you unfamiliar with the Final Fantasy IV randomizer, uh, it basically randomizes all the characters, bosses, treasure chests, key items, everything you could probably think of, puts them in random spots, and it looks like our racers are off. Good evening here, this is Stormy Galaxies. Like, Rosa is joined by Yang and a Baron Key. So not the highest damage profile pony to begin with, but uh, definitely a stable pony with Rosa as, as a key healer. Trying to figure out some technical difficulties with my co-commentator, but I will continue on as it is. Uh, looks like most of our runners here are gonna run into Baron right away and do some looting. Uh, try and get some items, some gear for these characters. A few J items for some damage early could be very useful. We do see Rydia with a Golbez in Baron Inn. Uh, not the most fun place to see Golbez, as he will still go through his whole script before he can defeat him. I'm well, seeing a couple nice pieces of gear here. Uh, Rune Ring in Rosa's house is not bad. A Gaia Drum outside will be very useful. And I believe I saw a Ninja Star, which, you know, is useful with an edge, but it's also really good for that extra money you can sell it for. Shop check. We do see Star Veils, which are a very nice early item. Uh, some bosses have spells that you can reflect or other things, and it can be very useful. You also see some Hourglass 3, which are not the cheapest thing in the world, but definitely very useful. A couple of our runners, Gaming and Wu Bear, checking out Mist Village. Uh, they may be looking in these shops, uh, it looks like. Bears find some wizard gear. Well, gaming is just going for some more treasure at this point. And as a surprise twist, I have a new co commentator. Uh, joining me will be Inveterable in a second, and he will help me keep you all up to date on everything these runners are doing. <laughs> A bunch more shopping and uh, treasure checks. Uh, Rexwell has decided to go to Damsey and Wu Bear has gone over to, I believe that was the Kaipo, and Gaming with Race has decided to start looting up the Troya treasure. What's going on in this race, Kobahi? How's it going, dude? Oh, not too bad. We just have our racers starting up, doing their initial lootings, and it looks like we finally have Rexwell heading to Mount Hobbs to check out that first character check. Oh, excellent. I do see my girl Rosa and that, uh, oh, Yang, starting Yang. Woof. Yeah, not the highest damage profile, Pody, but there's been a couple J items. There's been at least a Guy Drum and a Lip Bolt. And I, I think I saw a Samurai Bow as well, so Rosa's going to be doing some work. Excellent. Ooh, and not a very difficult boss up here either. That HP will be split. They're vulnerable to hourglasses and be picking up that, uh, that DKC pretty quickly. Definitely, and it, it's the Kaipo goes to boot, so you don't even have to worry about the counters from physicals or magic. Aw, sad to see though that Blizzard, which does HP based damage, managed to bump off two of the soldiers. Last one had just a teensy bit of HP left, but that kick cleans it up. Now just wait for the officer to finally take another action, and there we go. Party increased. 
Yeah, definitely nice. Uh, I'm wondering if this Cecil is going to point any of our runners into the, the way of ordeals in the near future, or see what they all decide to do. Yeah, and I was a bit delayed hopping in, you know, uh, subbing in. Uh, who was the Baron character in the inn, and did you see any of the uh, enemies guarding that character? It was Aridia guarded by Golbez, so... <laughs> not... Yeah, not the most fun. <laughs> <laughs> what is fun is the sorcerer robe that Rex Raul just got for actually popping over to the west side of Hobbs. A wonderful piece of gear, probably one of the best things you can get on a, on the T3 flag. Great for any white mage or black mage. That's definitely a nice find and, and a good play by Rex to go loot that even without a, a source of exit that a lot of runners usually use to loot the backside. Looks like we do have Mouth being our first runner entering the Antlion Cave and going to be going for that first key item check. Oh, yeah. Picks up a tiara as well. Oh, gosh. So we have at least a change rod from the Damsian Treasury, a tiara from here in Antlion Cave, and a Sorcerer Robe on West Hobbs. You know, I, d I don't really want to fight Golpez for her, but Rydia can actually dish out some magic damage when you stack those uh, pieces of gear on her. Yeah, she can be very viable with that, although hopefully we can find another Black Mage somewhere too. But I, I foresee our runners eventually doing that check, uh, oh. just maybe not looking forward to it. Oh yeah, and the uh, the Safety Life Chest from Vanilla has a Black Sword, so even without going up ordeals, our, uh, our Pain Man is going to be doing work once we get that equipped on him. Yeah, definitely his best weapon to boot even has the added effect of instant death chance, so. Oh yeah, the instant death proc, like Woo Bear, showing it off right there, along with the uh, the stat bonuses are also nothing to sneeze at. Like Moth is gonna give us a look at the boss here, goading this item. Oh, we have some Dokips, so another free boss, fairly early in this seat. Yeah, you kinda, you kinda hate to see that. Uh, free bosses early on, uh, you know that you can take them down just as easily in the rudest of lunar spots. Um, on the other hand, you know, it, it's not that bad to get things going quickly, efficiently early on, uh, but it, it will come back to bite us if we end up having to see, like, Valvolus and Ogopogo and people like that in our later spots. Yeah, and Moth just using, using those J items to make quick work of these uh, Dark Imps here. And we are going to quickly see what the key item or possibly something else is here. Hmm. Pan, pretty handy. Uh, as soon as we get underground access, that's at least two more key item checks, and it makes routing the Sheila 1 check much more efficient. Great pickup. Yeah, it's definitely a very nice thing to see early, not forcing you to double dip spots in the underworld without, you know, being necessary. Uh, we do have Wuba actually going directly to for Bull. Uh, it might be they took a bit more damage than they wanted on top of the mountain and just wanted the free heal before they went to Antlion. Uh, Perfectly but, reasonable. Uh, we do see Dr. Luge, who I also think is another one of those free-ish bosses, so... Yeah, because the whatever at HP at the spot is split four ways between Dr. Luge, Balnob, Balnob Z, and Luge Z. But if you do your fight right, you're not going to see Lugazi. Here we do see it, but there's so much DPS, I don't think Wubear is going to have a problem with it. Nah, definitely not. Just that Cecil is still doing over 200 damage a swing, just makes quick work of him here. Another nice part about finding this one for Bool is even if he manages to poison you, it's going to go away after the fight. <laughs> oh yeah, love to get that free heal both before and after the fight. Uh, here and Ordeal's both pretty good for that. Definitely. Yeah. Although, Wu Bear being a little too fast here, drawing all these sleep counters before getting poisoned. That's actually kind of the good thing about getting poisoned by Luge, is that with the status priorities, you can't be put to sleep if you're already poisoned, but you can be poisoned if you're already asleep. Yeah, it's just the way the game was programmed and the way the, the debuffs stack and things. Like, I know if you're poisoned, you also can't, you know, Bacchus wine to get Berserk or anything. Looks like the rest of our runners have picked up their pan. Uh, Rex and both making their way to Fabul as well, and I'm gonna guess uh, Gaming with the Raids will be on their way short. Oh yeah, all kinds of high-fiving going on here. Even with those sleeps, Wubo makes it through. Oh yeah. 
and we were about to show us what the actual reward is here. Rat tail. Uh, again, we'll, we'll need the hook before we can actually turn that in. will be a key item check. Uh, right now, just kind of going to have to sit on the back burner until we actually get that other item. Definitely. And I guess we're down to... Oh, I guess we have the Baron key as well. So there's about three, three more checks, well, general checks, that a runners can do looking for a way to the underground. And then there's always those tricksy uh, vanilla Demus and Octomom spots that uh, a friendly Demus could be hiding. Oh, yeah. Uber headed south, the next closest town, Silvera. Uh, of course, with J-Items on, there's quite a bit of shopping that everyone will want to do once they have the cash to afford these items. Lots of great utility you can get for them. Uh, again, I came in a little late. Did we see Star Veils for sale anywhere yet? Yes, yeah, Star Veils, Hourglass 3s were in Baron, and I believe Hourglass 2s were in Kaibo? But okay. I, I, I'm not 100% if that's the shop where they were in. That'll be very convenient. The uh, Although that Golbez fight, you said it's Golbez at the Baron Guards? Yeah. Yeah, very few HP, but will probably be pretty speedy compared to this team. And any one of his spells, I'm pretty sure would one-shot any of these party members. At, at this point, almost, almost definitely. Like, his first thing that he does is a virus, too. So, very damaging spell. And we'll, we'll see what these runners do when they decide. It looks like Wu Bear has decided it is Ordeal's time. Time to get my Paladin. Yeah, Wubear has. I'm, I'm a little. Wu Bear ha, has left Antlion Cave hanging, which we know pretty decent item there. I mean, it may all come to nothing, in which case this will definitely save Wubear time. Not only by not doing Antlion, but then not having to spend the time going for all the pan checks and everything. Uh, but that's a lot of checks to be foregoing. Uh, of course, he doesn't know that at this point. But we'll see how it ends up playing out. Uh, question though. With the weapon we we have, Kobai, would you rather keep your Dark Knight? I would kind of rather keep my Dark Knight around. Uh, at, at, at this point, you're kind of running low on options. Uh, I, I'd probably rather value trying to get underground than worrying about my Dark Knight at this point. I mean, with Rosa with that Samurai bow, and I believe we have access to mute arrows and things like that, we can get a lot of damage out, even without the, the Black Sword. True, true. And yeah, given that our other option is either a an underleveled Baron Castle or a Golbez fight, yeah, Ordeals does make sense. I just, whenever I get the actual, the Black Sword, the Deathbringer Sword, I, I want to milk it for all it's worth. But on this seed, yeah, you're kind of right. Let Moving along of the mountains, probably the best call. And another thing too, like the Palom Cecil will get them a 600 health character to, uh, base. That might actually live through that virus. True, Fun. true. The uh, near I'm pointing out in chat that we are running very low on <laughs> free bosses. We've seen the Kaipo guards. We've seen the dark imps. We've seen the, uh, we just saw water hag. And honestly, gold does is kind of a free fight if you get it set up correctly. So not too many uh, remaining already. I wouldn't call Golbez, well, free, but not fast, maybe. There you go. That, yeah, makes sense. Although we Martha do Sar. See this... Oh, go ahead. Uh, I was about to say, we do see this Rubicante uh, glaring out the, our characters here. Well, Martha Sar has that Ice Claw, so that'll actually allow Yang to do appreciable damage here, though maybe not from the back row. Oh, <laughs> swapping again. <laughs> Back and forth, back and forth. Yeah, there's that quadruple damage. I, is it quadruple or just double that the Ice Claw gives? Um, actually not sure. I would assume at that damage value, it looks like it would be quadruple. Because Yang at this lower level usually doesn't do that much damage. Oh, yeah. It makes quick work of this Rubicante. Oh, yeah. What was also with a power attack. So power attack plus that Ice Claw, 1300 damage. Very nice to see. I bet some of our racers are wishing they had kept those uh, those Blizzard items, because those would also do bonus damage here. Uh, fun thing about the Blizzard item is that even if Rubicante's cape is closed, for some reason it bypasses his normal immunity, like, I, I guess because it's HP-based damage, but you still get the multiplier for the weakness. It's very surprising. Just one of those little fun interactions Final Fantasy IV has programmed into it. Yeah. Don't try it with your normal ice spells, kiddos. You'll have a bad time. 
Although if you get an ice spell off before he opens his cape, it works. Oh yeah. Like the first time. Absolutely. I learned that by our, uh, when our tracker, Pidge01, did that during the Twinvitational uh, at the end of last year. I was like, what? That worked with the cape closed? Uh, but yeah, it doesn't actually get the action to fix it until uh, after the first actual closing of it. We have found a very valuable boss on the top of ordeals as well. Uh, there's a demist hiding in the mirror. Yep, we do have uh, that, uh, that the no free lunch flag, specifically the NK, so no free key item. And so Edward in the in the Troya bed gives you nothing. You gotta find the D-Mist, kill it, and go to town. Uh, and yeah, here's our bonus round. Maybe this will actually pay off the extra, especially since the actual item up here was only a Masamune, which I say only, it's Edge's best sword. But I think the seed that happened on the Free Enterprise channel earlier took all the edges for the weekend. It's quite possible. Uh, Rex giving us a little peek at that Kaipo bed, and I believe I saw a sleeping Edward. So I don't think we're going to see many sand ruby turned-ins, but life potions and coffins in the shop, very useful. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I was I was tuned into the other race before I came over here, and they found edges, two different edges, I believe. Uh, so our ninja quota is allotted for. Just go ahead and sell that Masamune. You're not going to get any use out of it. Trust me, I promise. The problem is, as soon as you sell it, that's when you get the edge. Now, it, it so one thing that I'll, that I will confess happens to me all the time is that if I get a really good key item on ordeals, I will immediately forget that I fought D Mist whatsoever. So I guess it may be a good thing that they only got a katana, because <laughs> you don't have to worry about forgetting it in this case. It's like, oh yeah, Mist Village, let's go. Yeah, I, I always make sure I try and make a note of it somewhere, you know, check d -mist if I find them, just so I don't accidentally forget, as, as I have done before. Yeah, Marth's going to tease us a little bit here, not actually going to show us what the item still has a bit of shopping to do, just routing these checks in uh, while looping around the world. There's our Cure 2s, another one of the guaranteed overworld items. Like We have a bit more high-fiving as Rex and Gaming with the Wraith have both started heading up ordeals. Well, Wubo's just finishing it off and about to head down. I do like that with this cane start, a racer's apparently either found or purchased both an Ice Claw and a Thunder Claw to complement that starting Fire Claw. Got all three elemental varieties covered, and like we saw with that Rubicante fight, uh, Yang will do surprising work if you actually play to that strength of his. Yeah, de definitely. Like, the, the elemental, I guess weaknesses in this game can be very well exploited. Uh, are we going to finally see that demonist check? No? Nope. Going to bear it in first, maybe. You see, maybe... Marth, did you, did you, did you forget your mist dragon? Oh. The most part is the longer you put it off, the more chances you have to actually forget that you did it. We'll see if yeah. Wubo makes the same decision or is going to go check that right away, maybe? I... Uh, actually, I'm not sure. Wubear, we're... Oh, wait. I, oh, Wubear's not done. Okay. Yeah, Wubear finally going back, but not putting off that Antlion Cave any longer. That would be a real bad one to forget this seed, probably. So, fair enough. But come on, d -mist, free item. Go get it, y'all. Yeah. And it is possible. I know Wubear found the exits in Silvara. Uh, he might have been waiting until he had a form of exit to be doing this antlion cave so that they don't have to walk out afterwards. Oh yeah, you can tell because he's walking up to this northeast chest, actually picking it up on the way in instead of the way out. That usually indicates the runner uh, has that exit uh, plan, that exit strategy <laughs> in, their, in their head. All right, Marth. We'll see how you handle this Golby fight. Most fight for Marth is Yang got taken out. The Fire Claw would probably be the easiest chance to one shot this Golbez, although that reflected virus will do the job as well. Okay. We'll see. Marth managed to get a Starvel up prior to the dragon doing its chomping. Luckily, that Cecil didn't get eaten. Bada bing, bada boom. First part's through. It is important to remember, though, even though you'll get Rydia here, this is. Oh! Great follow-up, by the way. Uh, 
because Golbez was the first fight there, this spot will not have the only way underground if it has one at all. So if we find the hook here, we know the magma key is still hanging somewhere else. And at this point, I believe it would have to be on that Demis check. No, it's still got the Baron key. Oh, yes, you are correct. I completely forget that we start with the Baron key. It's just... Who cares about starting items? Yeah, it'd be interesting if, you know, the hook does come in and both does forget about that D-Mist. If it is the Magma Key, that could be very disadvantaged. <laughs> fair enough, bitch, fair enough. This Ogopogo fight is not looking pretty at this point. Although, with that miss, I'm guessing Marth must have popped a Moon Veil on his Yong, but Hope you got enough Cure 2s, because even with the physical misses, those big waves are going to be doing work. I believe Mouth bought 80 Cure 2s, so... <laughs> okay. Fair enough. <laughs> One thing I'm not sure is what claws are on Yang right now, because he's only uh, doing he... about 168 damage. He swapped over to the Thunderclaw, but Ogopogo doesn't actually have elemental weaknesses, so we're not going to see any boost, um, regardless of the claw loadout. Huh. Didn't actually realize that. I think I always just end up physically him down anyways with regular characters. Yeah. It's kind of cute, too, because if you do hit him with a lightning spell, he doesn't do his normal blaze counter. He does a single target weak counter instead, which honestly, sometimes I favor that with my team. Maybe I'd rather have one character at critical HP than all my characters taking another 25%. But very yeah. clever realizing uh, that this is a very good time to use the Moonveil. So, Marth will get through here slowly but surely. Yeah, with, uh, I think, 77, uh, 76 Q2s left, uh, there shouldn't be too much of a problem, just a little bit of a time sink. Uh, we do have Rex and Gaming with the Wraith both finishing up their Mount Ordeals play here, and Wubei is also in this Golbez fight. Yeah, it looks like we lost Rex's... Oh, wait. Okay, we just got a flash. Oh, there it goes. Uh, hopefully we'll get Rex's stream back up shortly. We do have, of course, all our racers uh, have been reminded to do local recording. So as long as his power didn't go out completely, which... Oh, wait. In Rex's first race, his power went out completely and he lost about... Oh, no, Rex. I, I really hope that that didn't happen again. Yeah, it'd be quite unfortunate for Rex. Uh, although we do have Wubo finally checking out D-Mist for us. Oh, thank goodness. Show me underground access. Or Twin Harp that leads to underground access. Ha! <laughs> okay. I mean, not a bad item, but just not the key item we wanted. Yeah, you, you see that Mr. Dragon and you get so excited. And then, I mean, I love a, I love a power shirt, but still... <sighs> Still just a little twinge of disappointment. And I believe Wubo had some trouble with that, that either that Golbez or saw the Ogopogo and decided to do this check first. So we'll see if he decides to head back into Golbez or just go straight for those Baron uh, Castle fights. Looks like Wubo has decided to forego the Baron Inn and head straight into the Baron Castle. Must not have liked how that fight was going with the Golbez into the Ogopogo, but Marth has gotten through. We'll add that Iridia to the team. And what is the actual item we get? Another tail. Uh, of course, we have no adamants on, so the pink tail will not give adamant armor. It will give another piece of ultra rare gear. But given the variety of the team that we're rocking, I don't hate I don't hate making that I mean we have the rat tail anyway but with the variety of the team there's a lot of pretty valid options in that ultra rare pool and he has that self summon for Rudia so gonna make a little use once she gets a little MP on another side note Wu Bear found a cat claw going through this barren waterway so that's gonna be a very nice addition to Yank's power ooh nice
And of course, I wasn't here at the very start, so I'm going to be surprised at who the uh, who gave that initial starting item. I'm trying to remember back to who it was now myself. Uh, oh, okay. A friendly neighborhood dog elf. Like, Marth has decided to pick up their power robe before heading into Baron itself. Uh, looks like that will be our next check here, as I believe that's all we have left on the overworld that's readily available to us. You know, I am really liking uh, a lot of this gear. So we have a power shirt and a strength ring. We have a wide variety of claws for Yang. We have a really powerful bow for Rosa. Rydia, well, at least for Marth who picked her up, we've seen a dragon whip, a tiara, a sorcerer. Well, he didn't only want to... Was it Marth or someone else who went over? To... It was Rex who went to West Hobbs and got the sorcerer robe. So lots of great gear hanging out in this seed very early. If you actually are being willing to be a little bit greedy. Yeah, I think the only thing our runners would really like right now is a, a better weapon for the Cecil. It's, I don't believe anyone is rocking anything of value. Like, uh, Ruber has some sort of bow on him, while Rosa's just designated to healing at this point. Yeah. <laughs> and Marth sells that Masamune for the cash, which... Uh, so that means that it will be Edge here in Baron Castle, right? I think that's how it works. Oh yeah, it's, it's almost guaranteed at this point. I mean, it's good for anyone who still has it, but most is... yeah. <laughs> we do see Gaming with Wraith in this Oko Pogo fight with the Yang. Uh, see, using some illusions instead of that Moon Veil possibly to get the same effect will be a little more item uses, but could get them through still. Decided to reset. Not worth it. Moobear has taken care of this Dark Elf and Dragon. So, next up, we have the Throne. Healing up a little bit beforehand, though. Uh, you can always be unpleasantly surprised by the boss here. Uh, although, we know it can't be Wyvern. Because we don't have a way underground yet. So, that's good, at least. Yeah, so, it looks like, ooh, Ashura is actually the boss here. Uh, if they have those mute arrows with those Cecil, it could be not too bad, uh, but we'll see how Wubo decides to do this. Yeah, and Marth actually checked the Baron Weapon Shop and found an Elven Bow, so there's his source of quadruple damage for the Asura fight. Shame the Elven Bow and the mute arrows don't stack, because I believe he put both on. Oh, don't... <laughs> Oh, that would be a thing of beauty. Just to, to see, you know, level 10 characters firing arrows for 5,000 damage. That would be, mm, that would be spicy. Still 1,500 a shot from Cecil here on Wubear's side. Gonna make pretty quick work of this Ashra. <laughs> I think we'll be okay. Looks like he also did a double star veil in order to get a wall up on Ashra, so no chance of it healing up. Hey, Free Enterprise, thank you for the raid. Welcome to your other league race this afternoon uh, between Rex Raul, Wu Bear, Gaming with a Wraith, and Marth SR. Uh, although we have temporarily lost Rex, and the other three of our racers are all pretty much neck and neck at this point. You can see their key items, their party members. Uh, the main difference is that Marth actually picked up a Rydia in the Baron Inn, who was behind both Golbez and Ogopogo. Oh. Yeah, it wasn't the most kind Baron in, but uh, Wu Bear is going to show us another Rosa here in Baron Castle. <laughs> I mean, she's my favorite white mage, so this works, this works. Ooh, Rivers is teaching us some new tech in chat, so... Note to self, carry a stack of ice arrows around and get ready for some real silliness. Yeah, 
be I was shown a hook in Baron. <sighs> well, we have two tails, so that's not the worst thing. It'd be pretty cute if the rat tail turn in actually gave us a magma key, but uh, other than that, we do have another character down in Ebon Cave, another shop, but those upper Babel bosses could either be really friendly or really rude. to do some more shopping before heading down that hook route, making sure they're as equipped as they can before they go fight the, you know, higher level boss spot. That could potentially be a little dangerous, especially with all the free bosses we've seen already taken out in this scene. That though it looks like they are going to go and grab the hovercraft and turn in that rat tail to make sure that the magma key is not something that's going to troll them into being a hidden item. Uh, the pink tail was from the Baron Inn, I believe, which is Moth is the only one who defeated the Golbez and Ogre Pogo there. Gaming with a Wraith and Marth SR both dealing with this Asura fight in concert. Wu Bear lugging that hovercraft over. Uh, perhaps overlooking his rat tail, though. Going ahead and dropping the hovercraft off here at Cave Eblin. Uh, might want to double check. Oh, yep. <laughs> you can. Well, I thought maybe he was realizing that, uh, that he had the rat tail in his inventory. <laughs> he may be going back up. Oh, no, maybe checking Odin. Okay. Hey, you do you, Wubear. <laughs> yeah, there, there's there's an Odin check. Uh, he hasn't taken out the Baron in yet, and that rat tail still to go. So maybe checking to see if there was a free boss here in this Odin spot in order to give them another key item. Have ourselves Ooh. the Magus sisters and a reset. Yeah. <laughs> you can see how uh, SNES 9X automatically does an oops save state if you've not actually updated the game, the file's SRAM over a certain amount of time. So <laughs> when you see that oops pop up, you know they hit the reset button. But I wonder if I, I, I'm actually going to pop up Woo Bear stream right quick because I have got to know if he just forgot to mark off the rat tail on his own tracker and thus is uh, overlooking it, or if it's just... Yep. Woo Bear did not mark the rat tail off on his personal tracker. So we'll see how long it takes him to remember that's there. And we're going to keep our fingers crossed for him that it is not the magma key. I mean, it's right there in his inventory while he's shopping. Hopefully he noticed it there and is just going to finish his shopping spree, but we never know. Okay, since he is doing the shopping, I, 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 I'm, I'm opening that tab back. Let's see if he notices it. He is an emote-only chat, so no one's going to be doing anything inappropriate, of course, but I just, ooh, it, it pains me. It pains me. Definitely. Although we do have Gaming with the Wraith and Mouth as uh, picking up their hooks. We'll see what they decide to do with them. Mouth having both those tails uh, could cash in with some decent gear with the, uh, the pink tail. We do have Rex Rule back with us. Unfortunately, had some PC issues uh, at this point. Going to be quite a bit behind the other runner. Now, League rules do allow a racer to request a restart or reroll if all the opponents agree to it. Uh, however, if your opponents have everything minimized, including the SRL channel, Discord, any means of contacting them, well, it's kind of hard for them to actually respond in the affirmative, of course.
beginning with the Wraith, going to actually show us the Rat Tell and if there's any value. Let's see what Wu Bear's missing out on by overlooking them. We get an Oath Crystal. So we have another Overworld check and some more character checks, which at this point I would probably go and do that to try and get the best party I can to go through that hook. Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, ironically though, this could actually end up benefiting Wu Bear considerably. Uh, if these characters aren't particularly good, if there's already a good character down here in Eblin Cave, uh, and if, I mean, that's a long check. You have two boss fights, multiple cutscenes, so it, it could be a good thing. Gaming with the Wraith going into Agot, I don't think you can drop that hook down the well, so... <laughs> Showing us a little bit of that added flavor text that Borden Rivers gave us. It looks really deep. Or is that actually vanilla? I'm not actually sure on that one. I don't think I've ever gone to that well. I know the. I know that when it goes, uh, well, that's gone. I know that's <laughs> that's free enterprise exclusive. Uh, it looks like Mouth has decided the Eblon Cave is the place to be. Uh, we were doing the same, and it looks like Gaming of the Wraith is also. So we have all of our people going through the hook at this point. Nobody's going to check out that Oath Crystal if they have, you know, decided that they can Yep. Um, Artemis Arrows in that southeast chest in the first cave. Very, very great find. Pair those with that Elven Bow or that Samurai Bow. Your archers will be doing ridiculous damage. Uh, they're definitely a very handy item and a very powerful item to get. Yeah. And uh, I believe... One of our racers did fight the Stellman chest, but I didn't see what the actual loot from it was, did you? It looked like it was an Odin summon, so... Hooray! <laughs> Although I can, I can also say Mouth did find another ninja sword from that pink tail, so... So if there is an edge up in Zot, ooh, that would be very potent. Although wait, Marth sold his first ninja sword, so never mind. He can't get rid of these ninja swords, they just keep popping up. Like a whole bunch of different stacks of arrow users for both here, so gonna be kind of archering down whatever is here, hopefully, and not having too bad of a time. The funny thing, Supremacy, is that if King Queen Eblin's spot is either Valvolus or Wyvern, we know the magma key is through Zot, <laughs> which would be amazing. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see if that happens. And if it does, if any of our racers decide to, you know, turn around and go there instead. I didn't... Oh, I believe it was... Was it Octomom or Antlion at Rubicante's spot that I saw? Uh, I think I saw Tentacles, but they are easily mistaken for Claws sometimes. Yeah, I did see it was another Yang, but uh, it looks like it was an Octo. So Octo's going to hit really hard and fast to start, but if they can get a bunch of attacks in, they can slow it down very easily. Oh, yeah. Should not be a, a, a problem at this at this place. But now for that first fight... Oh, Wu Bear's going to go fight some Mad Ogres first. Ugh. I'm so impatient. I got to know. The pro oh, found another Cat Claw somewhere as well. Double Cat Claw, Power Shirt, Strength Robe, Headband on his Yang. Well, yeah. Yang 1. Oh, yang yeah, 2 gets the <laughs> other gear. <laughs> he apparently, Wu Bear doesn't have the Thunder Claw that Marth found, either in a shop or in a chest, so... This will give Marth a little bit of time to possibly catch back up, just from the bonus damage he'll have against Octo when he gets down there. Always a troll for this mad ogre fight to be in the last chest in the tower. <laughs> Especially if you want to heal up afterwards for that King and Queen Eblon spot. So Rex, of course, did have that PC issue, uh, so a little behind, but there are other two races are all pretty much neck and neck and neck. Wu Bear has a slight advantage here but not by much, and Marth has the gear to possibly uh, have a much easier time with these upcoming fights, as well as an extra character. Well, an extra character option, I should say. He can actually choose between any of these people and the extra Yang. 
18 Rydia that, that Odin... be interesting to see what he decides to go with when given that choice of Yang versus, I guess, any of the characters he currently has. You know what my favorite thing about Odin is? It sells for about 15,000 gold. <laughs> That's usually where mine end up as well. <laughs> no, I mean, it has a pretty bad hit rate, but if you stick her in the center, you can get those insta-kills on monsters vulnerable to those kind of death effects. And even some monsters that resist normal death, you can actually kill with Odin. For instance, the gold dragon fights on the moon, a very popular grind spot. Can't use coffins on them, can use Odin. I think it'll slice and dice anything that lacks the boss bit. Definitely depending on flag set and, and situations, it could definitely be useful, but uh, in, a, in a flag set such as these, it's generally buddy. Yeah. Imagine if we had actually included that SQ flag that makes items sell for one quarter instead of one half. You would love to see all the Odin summons. Like, give me those. I need the cash. I am so broke. No, definitely. I was a very... Uh, I would have loved to have those flags. I think I feel like they make your decisions early game a lot harder. And late game, it's not that bad. I got my hopes up when I saw that lunar sparkle. Not wyvern, so uh, we, we we can't immediately think magma key at zot. So this is fine. D lunars here, not so bad. Their punches will do a lot of work. Luckily, their flames are all just percentage damage. Uh, so shouldn't be too bad here, but they are hitting hard and fast. Blue Bear might have a little trouble after all. Yeah, it looks like he's gonna get some Star Veils up, maybe going for that Frog Strat here with, uh, reflecting the Breath Attack. Yeah. I think, I believe Cecil has a Dragoon Armor on, so those physicals will not do much to him in the back row. Oh yeah, the physicals will be reduced, and I think that actually reduces the percentage their, uh, their fire attack does as well. Get your froggies out in chat. We have Lunar Frogs, Woo Bear, letting his memes be dreams. I gotta love it. Gaming with the Wraith in this Mad Ogre fight, gonna get themselves a few levels. Uh, Rex Raul actually taking, trying to take out that Baron in spot, uh, both being her only other runner to do that. I really like that, uh, I, I know that Rex's naming system was all about Yong, but with the three characters he has, it's just, I know Yong! <laughs> cool. <laughs> Immediate reset upon seeing Ogopogo. Well, yeah, that big wave came out and Ces Cecil only had 50 HP left, so no surviving that at this point. At, well, at that point. Bear, having dealt with the Lunar Dragons, feels no reason to go back and heal up. Octomammoth, we can deal with this squid. Yeah, it looks like that first of melee only hit Yang for about 400. Uh, the lower one a little more, as he doesn't have a power up, so... With those illusions and uh, double healing, uh, should be able to get through this without too much issue. Even that Moon Bale on Cecil will make him indestructible. Fight. Ooh, actually using the Moonvel this site though, that that's kind of that, killing a killing a housefly with a cannon. Uh, I mean, I get I, Ruby Spot very rude, always something to be worried about. But that might be something that Wu Bear wishes he gets back once we get down here and see the Fey March bosses. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. It's, it's, it's an interesting call at the Moon Veil because some, sometimes I just hold it way too long and by the time, you know, there would have been a use for it, my characters are already powerful enough that if I'd used it earlier, it might have actually saved more time. So... <laughs> the, the Moon Veil is the new Mega Elixir, right? <laughs> <It's>... <laughs> oh, I can't use it this fight. What if there's an even worse fight? <laughs> One of those things just with RPGs. Always save those powerful items until you don't need them, and then they go to waste. For what it's worth, once we do get past Lockdown Mammoth here and get underground, odds are any any remaining boss that you have to deal with, you can deal with by sufficient grinding. It may not be the most 
timely means of getting through certain boss spots, but having two Yongs in the party, levels equals damage. Oh, certainly. And we did see Sirens in the Echo shop, so we already know that a grind option is available. Ooh, Agar, one of those shops that's easy to overlook on a hook seat, though. It, it definitely is, but if I want to, you know, look around and decide they need grinding, they, they'll probably go look for them and find them. Yeah. Aqua Mammoth down to one tentacle, gonna be super slow here. Uh, for those of you unaware of the pattern, your first three hits knocks it down to seven, then every two hits after that knocks it down to one more. And, and, that, and each tentacle reduction has a corresponding reduction in speed. So if you ever are practicing the game with the Lewis script, so you actually see ATB ticks, it can be pretty funny to Silkweb Octomammoth get it down to one tentacle and watch it take like 200 ticks per turn. See a couple different strategies here for uh, gaming and mouth on these Lunar Dragons. It's kind of, oh, oh wow, that's the... How, how about that Artemis Arrow strat? <laughs> Casual 6,700 damage. As we watch gaming also move out of his house onto the Rosa. Uh, this d is not long. Both of them through, both of them about to hit up the, the Octomom. That move there is pretty close to finishing at this point. I can't remember. Someone mentioned this on the Discord when they were running a, a full on Cata seed at some point where they were bonking an Octomammoth fight to death. I believe at the Maga Sister spot, just for XP. But they were so weak that I think they were able to hit it enough times to underflow the tentacle count and bring it back up to full tentacles and full speed. Or overflow, pardon me. Overflow. Like, if you hit it 255 times, I think it loops back around? Or I may just be imagining that. I could swear someone said that on the Discord last year. That is a horrifying prospect. <laughs> Young, of course, the hero of Cata Seeds, where all you can do is hit the, the bear ability about 20 times over until nothing can hurt you. And I guess at 46, almost 47 minutes, Wu Bear is through the Octobomb fight and going to be our first runner in the underground. Excellent, excellent. And of course, we have that pan from Antlion Cave, so there are some very ripe checks to make down here. I'll be interested to see the routing Wu Bear takes. Normally I would do Fame Out first if I didn't have the pan, but with that pan I may be tempted to go straight there and see what all it gives me. Yeah, we're just pointing out in chat, we did not get a peek of the upper Babel boss from Wu Bear. Unwilling to take those four steps to give us the advanced knowledge. Hopefully either uh, Wraith or Marth will give us a little insight into what's waiting. We do see Rex making his way through this Baron Castle in that Ashra fight on the way to get his hook. Uh, so hopefully can make up some more time, but still looking a little dire at this point. Yeah. Well, I mean, Rando gonna Rando, of course, and there are spot checks. We've seen neither half of the crystal so far. There are spot checks that can completely turn the game around. So don't count Rex out yet. See Moth actually making use of that Sylph Summon to deal an actual decent amount of damage and heal off his party members that have been hit by Octo. Oh yeah, uh, again, you know, Baby Rydia may not learn Virus until a little late and Quake until way too late, but y y she can use a Tiara, which is something that the Quack Kid can't do. Oh! Can't do. That was a Magma Key from the Sylphs, sorry. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I saw. I saw. Uh, well, the good news is that it means the Earth Crystal did not have an alternate way underground. The bad news is it's, it's the Magma Key and we're already down here. <laughs> so basically what that means is it's another count towards 10. Which ain't bad. Nothing wrong with that. No, definitely not. It'll be interesting to see if Wu Bear ever remembers that he has that rat tail as well. Uh, could be checking Agot, so if they had, do not have Sirens yet, they will have them soon. Yeah, maybe Wu Bear has some stuff to sell. We'll be able to notice this in the yeah, yeah. All right, all right. So that you see the grayed out magma key. You see that grayed out rat and that grayed out pan. Come on, see it, see it. 
I really, I really hope he notices that and just doesn't tunnel vision on all the stuff he's looking to, to clean out. <laughs> we'll probably be able to tell based on if he goes and swaps airships right now. Although it looks like Moth and Gaming, within a few seconds of each other, have made it through that Octomon fight and will be making their way underground as well. <gasps> He's going left! Hey, oh. you noticed it! All right. <laughs> I mean, at least so, he's already got the confirmation that he didn't miss a magma key, so he might not feel be feeling as bad about it. But oh yeah, yeah. The, if he if he hadn't seen the magma key already, this would be a pretty funny. You'd know that there would be a major sigh of relief right here. Chat pointing out none of our runners making it through have peaked that boss at the top of the tower. I mean, it's one of those subtle things that. Uh... I know Marth's been running the game for a while, but I believe Boo Bear and Wraith are, and Rex are all new additions since the first iteration of Highway to the Zima Zone. So it's just one of those, you know, subtle things that y you don't notice it until it makes a huge difference in a race. Rex has it. lost his PC again, sitting on that received hook screen. Oh, there we go. Oh, thank goodness. All right, we're getting our two Sheila checks here from Uber. Sheila won. This one didn't require the pan. Dragoon Spear. No cane to be seen, though. And a Sand Ruby for the second one. Did yeah, you get a Edward. Peak? Edward. Oh, Edward. <laughs> Hooray! Uh, we have Gaming with the Wraith actually going to be scrambling some eggs for some levels. First thing in the underground. A uh, very popular choice as well. Uh, allows them to power up their pony quite significantly at this point. All right, so at this point, I think I'm going to be rooting for a really rough Dark Knight Cecil, maybe at like the Bahamut spot, to where anyone who comes back here and picks up that Edward will be rewarded for their spooniness. Oh, it does look like Wubo, now having toned in the pan and that rat tail, is going to go do that Earth Crystal. Not bad. He did just get that Dragoon Spear, so uh, upgrade it. Uh, Rose is great. But you don't really need two of her. So looking to upgrade for either, you know, a black mage or maybe someone who can use some of this weaponry. Not bad at all. Uh, we know Marth sold one of his katanas. Does Wu Bear still have his Masamune? Not 100% on that one. Didn't really see in that selling sphere. I was more worried to see if he saw that rat tail. Yeah. Speaking of upgrades, a little lightsaber here for Marth's Paladin Cecil. Uh, decent step above the Ogre Axe. It's not quite on the level of, you know, defense, and definitely not on the level of Excalibur Crystal, but I don't hate it. Some cure through some silk webs in the shop here, so, you know, some decent items. So Marth and Wraith both doing the Fame Arts checks. Well, Wubear is giving us this Earth Crystal insight, and Rex will have a choice to make here as well, whether to go for that Earth Crystal or to head on underground. It could be an interesting thing if Rex decides to do Earth Crystal, and it maybe yields the darkness. Does he go to the moon before he does that hook? It could be the kind of swing that Rex needs. Uh, get your levels on the moon and then be able to just power through those spots faster than your opponents did, especially if you find everything you need to make your crystal on the moon. And then at that point, if he does that get more pieces, the, the, the hook route will be no problem. Even the, the bosses are fairly easy. He would take them out with faster speed than our other runners at this point, if that ends up being the way. But we do find a annoying bomb bomb up here. Wraith is going to give us a quick peek at some dolls and Odin in the summon spot. Ooh. Uh, hey, have I mentioned how great an addition to this team Edward would be? <laughs> There's a reason for him right there. Uh, deciding with uh, having now some hourglasses, taking out the dolls shouldn't be that much of a problem. The back ones are susceptible to stop. The front ones are not. So you can stop the back ones, take out all the front ones, and just kind of go for them. Yeah, of course, the Odin... The Odin's in the Asura spot, right? 
that is correct. My weapon. Yeah, a Sura spot being very speedy. Uh, you probably won't have the DPS. Well, hmm. We have at least one Thunderclaw on Yang, and we did just get Silk Webs. Th that fight might be doable at this point, even without resorting to Eddie Strats, like I was uh, suggesting. Hey, we found a ninja. Hey, Blue Bear, I hope you kept your katanas. Uh, I mean, he would only have the one. The second one came from that pink tail that only oh. one of us found. True, true. But even one Masamune, I'll take it. Uh, definitely a, a very nice character to find, even even if you just want to strip the gear off. Oh, another red boot. <laughs> I'm really, really, really rooting for this Odin fight down here to have something important, and people either have to overgrind or take advantage of Eddie Strats. Interestingly, Wubeo's dropping one of his Yangs for that... He does have Smasmino still. Yeah, however, he did not activate the back row glitch there. If you only have a boomerang or full moon equipped, in either hand is fine, if it's the only thing equipped. But if you actually have weapons in both hands, you gotta put it in the right hand. Uh, also finding a pain man in Valvola's spot. We did get an Excalibur from this Dolls fight, though, so an upgrade on that light my light sword already. Oh, yeah. God, I'm so sad DKC's here. All, all my hopes of Eddie Strats coming into play are just being dashed. I think most of the bosses that can use Eddie Strats have been taken care of. The only one left is, what, a truly evil wall somewhere? Yeah. <laughs> so Marth SR now has a Cecil with an Excalibur and a Yong with a Thunderclaw, has Silk Webs, and I believe his roses are high enough level to both know Berserk. I I, I like that. I like this. Go go for it. Yeah, we'll see how this turns out. Uh, this, again, this Odin's going to be pretty fast and hit decently hard. So. Yeah, turning that battle speed down to four. I. Yeah, I can appreciate that in this in this circumstance for sure. Just remember to turn it back up once done. Definitely. We actually do see Rex in that Earth uh, Tower. Oh, so rude! Oh, are you gonna cast Berserk on someone with a lightning weapon? Uh, let me let me fix that. <laughs> Earth Crystal yields only a Luka key, so after this, Rex is definitely gonna have to head through that hook route. Ooh, well, there's one-fifth of Odin's HP, but that's the third swing. That sword's about to come up. About 8,000 damage. Yeah, if Odin had not one-shot the initial Rose of Berserk cast, I think Marth has this. He might get it anyway, but that Zentetsu Ken is about to come out. Do you know if he threw a Silk Web at the beginning? I didn't quite catch. I don't think he got a chance to. I, oh, so close! Marth, you gotta try it again. You gotta try it again. See what Marth decides to do here. Looks like he might be heading back to attempt it another time. Maybe getting a Silk Web, getting those Berserks off a little earlier, and just needs a little bit more damage out of his body to take him down. Oh, Marth! Oh, no! He didn't save after getting the Excal. Oh, that's not great. I mean, it's a free fight, but it is time consuming. We do have Wu Bear checking out this Mega Sister fight in the Odin spot now, too, so. I believe he still has mute arrows on some of his characters, so. Odin, you jerk! He is definitely not playing nice in this fight. This is actually good that Young's gonna come up in critical health. Oh no, don't cure him! Ah! Uh, it would be it would it would be great because Cecil, of course, is in the back row and will auto cover anyone in critical health. Which honestly, that may be a good idea here, Marth. 
go walk on those damage tiles, only heal up your Cecil, and let him tank these hits. Yeah, it could definitely be a useful strategy having a back row Cecil, you know, covering everyone. I uh, believe he doesn't have the greatest defensive equipment, but the back row itself is going to make him take a lot less damage. Yeah. I just hope that he... You know, oh, this is, this is rough because, of course... Oh, Charm Claw, by the way. Ugh. I hate Charm Claws. They are deceitful. They are, they are conniving. They will betray you. Uh, but, okay, swap it out for Lightning Claw. Going for these Berserks again. Uh, hits the middle Rosa this time, so... This gang will actually get Berserked with that Thunderclaw Cat Claw combo. Yeah, yeah, but again, it doesn't do any good if Odin's just going to one-shot him. No. Looks like uh, Game of the Wraith has decided Dwarf Castle is the play, showing us one of the Mylons in that first spot. And Rex. Marth surrendering both the Excal and whatever is behind that Odin spot. Uh, don't forget, friends, Cecil's cover ability? Broken. It, it, I, I consider it the second most broken ability after the hide command. You can take advantage of it to do things in a seed that you can't do with any other character. Don't forget that when you're dealing with rude physical bosses. Definitely. And it looks like Wubear has managed to make it through this Maga Sister fight at Odin, so we will see what shows up here. About deciding it's time to get some levels. <laughs> Cannot blame him for that. Oh, baby! Alright, we do have half of our crystal at the Odin spot behind Mega Sisters. Great use of those Mage Killer weapons to deal with the sisters, even not being at ridiculously high levels. Very well done by Wu Bear. Nice, and he's, he's doing a pretty good routing route as well. Like he did the Earth Crystal into Odin spot and now probably head back underground to finish up those checks that he hasn't done yet. Dwarf Castle, meanwhile, only has a Tella for our troubles, but it does give Black Magic utility, and he does have his full spell sweep, so it looks like Wraith is actually going to take the old man. Good uh -oh. anchoring as well, of course. Uh, but really who's the he was going to keep that Thunderclaw, and he did. <laughs> oh, just Plague. I was rooting for a Wyvern here. Seems you've been rooting for a Wyvern everywhere. Why is it in too this much spot, to ask? <laughs> why in this spot actually I find isn't too scary. His Mega Nuke only does about 1200 and it has a high chance to miss, I find. That's true, but it's a very speedy spot and if you're weak from the first fight, you can still be caught you can still be caught unawares. Similarly, the uh, I love it at the Kenatso spot for that same reason. You go in after that first fight in the two part and it's just like, "Oh, oh, I I wasn't I wasn't ready. So Rex going to get the Luka key here, uh, knowing that that hook route is their only way underground at this point. Be guessing Rex is heading for that Eblon cave in very short order, although he has a ninja in his party. Oh the... my goodness. Uh, well, Luka's necklace consists of a big old rock. Well, we know where both halves of our crystal are. We don't have moon access yet. But as soon as anyone gets a pass or a darkness crystal, we're good to go. Moon not required this seed. Oh, and there was only a few checks left, I believe, what, Luka Key and Keyless Tower? And yeah. I guess that Odin fight. Well, so one of those three should lead us all in our merry way. Interesting level. It looks like Wubo is heading for Dwarf Castle, so they may be getting their double their crystal combination soon, and then just looking for that way underground. Or, I guess, on the moon. I don't know. Marth's going to be in good shape as well if he can take down these Maga Sisters. Uh, I doubt he's going to be heading back to Feymarch after his misfortunes there, and that, again, for him, will just leave... Well, he, oh, he's not done Earth Crystal yet. I was going to say that would leave him Keyless Tower and Dwarf Castle as well, but nope, still has that Earth Crystal hanging. Both Gaming with the Wraith and Rex, both in this Golbez fight, uh, trying to get through to, I guess, maybe not the Rydia at this point, but at least the key item check on that other program. 
Uh, Bluen in the chat with a question. In Free Enterprise, can the past be on Earth and the moon completely sealed off? It cannot be. Uh, in any given seed, every key item will be available one way or the other, and as such, you won't have a key item blocking itself off. If you want to, you can go fight every boss fought, you can collect every character, you can do every key item check. It will all be there one way or another. And if it's not, please let us know in bug reports. <laughs> Mode is taking advantage of Lydia being able to bypass that wall with self summon. Uh, I believe a Berserk Rosa with Mute Arrows. Maybe both Berserk Rosas are just kind of <laughs> dealing a lot of damage. And at least one of them's wearing a. Yeah, that blue robed one is wearing a, uh, a heroin robe, so. I love me some Zerk and Roses. It's one of the subtle pleasures of Free Enterprise. Oh, wait, wait, yeah, Blue and Darkness will be behind one of these Earth Chains, but a racer who finds the pass first doesn't have to deal with those cutscenes, doesn't have to deal with walking the moon, things like that. <laughs> Rosa with a trick shot there, dude. That was, <laughs> that was her Patriot arrow. Fired, did a 180 in midair and finished off the last Maga sister. That is Moth getting their uh, legend sword and being one away from that crystal forge. Uh, and on the way, looking for that boot access. They're finishing off that plague and it's about to be in what I will now dub fake go mode. <laughs> Now, Wubear hasn't dealt with either of the Fey March bosses, so that is a temptation to him because of it being a two for one, which, you know, Excalibur, great find. Odin may have either the Pass or the Darkness, uh, but still, Luka Key. Some people have been saying always sealed. I think that's the new value in Cape Bahamut. Uh, but I'm a big fan of the Darkness Crystal being at a Keyless Lugay spot. You know, it'll be interesting to see what he decides to do. I mean, with that Luka key, you can do a quick run in and just check to see if it's one of those two things that's going to get you access. If not, we set out. Uh, yeah. Maybe. Uh... Also relevant, that adamant did put Uber at 10 key items. So already going to be getting double XP for many fights. Nice thing about the top of the tower, it's, I believe, about 52,000 once you have 10 key items. So a big old bump to your levels uh, as well before you get into doing a serious grind. Yeah, we do have them both heading straight into Dwarf Castle after getting that Legend Sword. So going to be getting their second half of the crystal as well here pretty quickly. It's like Game of the Races has decided the Earth Crystal needs to be done while Rex finally gets through that Ogo Pogo fight. Blue Bear picking up three ninja hats from the Kakol special shop. Uh, doesn't give quite the strength boost of a bandana, but gives a little bit of agility, a little bit of strength, a little bit of vitality. Pretty good piece of gear. Also very handy for getting a uh, an agility anchor into the right place for this Romus fight. Yeah, they're definitely a, a very nice item. going to go ahead and throw it on all of his uh, physical damage healers here. If, if you don't get up to a multiplier of uh, another multiple of 16, though, you're actually costing yourself damage there, usually. Ooh, there's one. Maybe you shouldn't have bought all those ninja hats. <laughs> Nah, having that Dragoon Spear to sell, being content with this team, Poison X, gonna be able to throw quite a big party with the amount of wine Wu Bear's about to buy. Yeah, he can buy 20 easily, almost 30, so gonna be happy with that. But where do you go to hunt your Lunar Access? That's an interesting question. We'll see what Wu Bear decides to do here. I, I'm thinking, yeah, but we are gonna see a Luka check here pretty quickly. Alright, I'm rooting for... 
pass in Luca versus darkness in Babel, and it's all going to come down to whoever makes the sealed game dive. I'm a fan of that Odin spot swimming because I know I know Marth could have gotten that with just a little bit a little bit more luck, or just remembering about that auto cover. And Marth was so close. Mm. Yeah, Marth about to grab this adamant here, see where he decides to go after this. Well, gaming of the wraith, head into that earth crystal. Rex, finally gonna dive that hook. Noteworthy though, Marth does not have that Luka key. So Silt Cave's not an option for him. So will he go back to try his hand at the Fey March again or do the single dip tower or if he goes for the Earth Crystal, he'll definitely behind Wu Bear. If he wants to pull ahead again, gotta be going for uh, for new territory, I think. Uh, and maybe Rex has figured out he has one more check left to do, being that Mega Sisters in the Odin spot. Doing everything he can not to have to dive this hook. All right, Wu Bear. The verdict is Darkness Crystal down here. Okay. But who's the boss keeping Wu Bear from being in true go mode? Let's see. We also see uh, Mouth buying four ninja hats instead of three. Oh, we have a Karate Man Yang. Free. Ouch. <laughs> Of course, no warp spell. Uber's gonna have to walk a shame this darkness crystal out. Uh, at this point, he's probably just happy to know where he needs to go. Oh yeah. Marth though, making the tower play. If the pass is here, this puts Marth in really good shape. So, uh, Marth, do you believe in the heart of the pass? Let's find out. We shall see. Doing the Keyless Tower is definitely a gamble here. You know, one spot for a pretty long walk, and nobody checked that boss still, so... Yeah. The good news for Marth, though, is that, that, again, only needing the Darkness Crystal, there's no way he's going to get rabbit holed by the moon. Worst case scenario, uh, what could even be holding him back now? He's not done Maga Sisters yet, I believe. And of course, the Odin spot. And the worst thing that either of them could lead to would be, say, Twin Harp into Tower Key or vice versa. That is correct. Although, you know, him not having that Luka Key is definitely a detriment at this point. Hopefully, if the pass is here, we could still have a pretty interesting race on our hands. Ooh, Lunar. This is either Pale Dim or Wyvern, right? I believe so. We've seen Plague, we've seen the D-Lunas. We saw Okopogo, so yeah. Which evil dragon is it going to be? <laughs> well, we do have, I believe, an Artemis arrow left. So Zerk up whoever has it, and you'll wreck it in a hurry. Uh, That's only Pale Dim. Oh, I was so hoping for an opening Mega Nuke. But here we go. Heroin Artemis Rosa about to tear Pale Dim up. I'm excited to see these damage rolls. Yeah, we do have Wubo heading immediately to the moon. Probably going to do a bit of a grind up there and then head straight to those Aromas fight. There's a casual 5400. Oh, <laughs> casual 8944. Yeah, this, uh, this Pale Dim is in so much trouble. <laughs> Three shots with the same arrow. Again, Rosa with her trick arrows. That's how she does. <laughs> All right, if it's the pass, we have a race. Uh, it's only an Avenger. <sighs> the worst thing about the Avenger being there is, yeah, this, this temp... Marth now wants to walk out and keep it instead of just resetting back down to the bottom. So that's going to cost him even more time. Gaming with a Wraith, meanwhile, getting that required Luka Key, as we know. And he's going to be right here at Baron. Let's see if he goes into the Odin spot. Uh, 
Oh, for a second I was wondering if he'd done original Bayon, but he would have had to, to get the hook. Yeah. Whew, that inventory management. The true final boss. You know, if you're looking for an anchor, the moon has one for you right here. But if I need a Sid, decide to pick him up as an anchor or just stick with... Nope, nope, just go away. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye, Wario Sid. Goodbye. Like, Rex has finally defeated these Maga sisters. Uh, it's going to get half of his crystal, but... Not the magma key he was looking for. Yeah. Unfortunate, to be sure. Tech issues, always, always a pain. Right, Gaming with the Wraith is heading into that Luca cave. Gonna be finding the... Darkness Crystal hopefully doesn't get baited by the moon before finding that Legend Sword. That's very dangerous for Wraith here. Uh, if anything, he might be saved by the fact that Wu Bear will probably be dot dunning within the next 10 minutes or so. And given the chain that it took to get the Darkness Crystal, that might imply to go back to go back to Earth. Yeah, it could be. It could be interesting to see how that pans how it pans out uh rex is gonna have to go underground now and if he, he makes a quick play to that dwarf castle he could be in a good position if he does also luca after i guess still a little bit of a chains left but if gaming with the race does get baited by the moon that does open it up for rex to kind of come in and throw if depending if on the other runners obviously both yeah. going back for that odin fight it looks like <laughs> he will have his vengeance. Starting out the fight with the Avenger on Cecil so that he's automatically in Zerk mode once he gets a turn. Uh, don't have to worry about taking the time to cast the spell. Getting very fortunate there with that first hit coming out on Rydia. She's kind of the uh, least important character in for Marth's team this fight. Let's see if... Also, berserking up that bottom Rosa, who might have lit arrows on. Ooh, oh yeah, I, I saw her redo the equip, so she'll be doing quad damage here as well once she gets rolling. It was a hook seed, Zudmud. Uh, magma key is the reward for from the Silk Fairies for bunking Yong with the pan. There we go, Marth. All right, if this is the pass, Marth still has a shot at this. If not, well, we know that the route goes through Zot and back to Sealed Cave. It's oh, no. Out. That's good for us, right? I, we will very likely get music. Yeah, immediately exiting out. Uh, my guess would be Twin Hope into Oath if Twin Hope yields nothing, as, you know, they put you right beside each other, so. Yeah. Uh, fingers crossed. Uh, Woo pair. Grind a little extra. Take your time. Oh gosh, getting the ten key items plus the life lich off. <sighs> Marth, you have to hurry and get this twin heart before Woo Bear gets done grinding. Faster, faster. Because <laughs> Woo Bear is tearing up these double dragons with that last Artemis arrow. I don't know, both hit the wrong chocobo. <laughs> Mark, please, we need the tunes. Yeah, Wubo is not going to need many more of these to be comfortable for Zoma's fight. Uh, yeah, it looks like he still has Artemis arrows left, just tearing these gold dragons apart. So it's kind of a, like, okay, it's Wubo's race to lose, but the real race now is between Twin Heart Music and Zoroma's fight. <laughs> Luckily, we can see Zoroma's without hearing it. That's true. I think I, I think I would request that our restreamer today uh, make an exception <laughs> and actually give us Twin Harp over Zoroma's fight just this once. Should 
checking out some agility values on some of his characters here. characters not wearing this metal gear trying to take them out here but I just have to wait for these attacks from Doko. Seems like Wu Bear is ready and heading down to the Zoroma's fight so. Alright well there's our perished on Marth's part and Wu Bear still has four crystal floors to pass through I believe. Now, I'm going to be quiet because I want to hear this music too. Final Fantasy Tactics. I don't know which song it is, and Marth is not inclined to read that harp uh, subtitle today. Finding himself an evil total, but at this point, at this spot, not going to be a problem. Well, so we figured out what music we got to jam to tonight, uh, but we also have another important question. It's... You want to throw it out there? Whose butt are we going to kick this afternoon? <laughs> it's booty time. Get to see one of our uh, like 400, I don't know, tons of uh, sprites here for Zeromus. Most of them made by our wonderful Scholar Kitty. It'd be nice if we got a Final Fantasy Tactics sprite to go along with the Final Fantasy Tactics music. Oh, uh, not we quite. A, we got a metal slide. Shout out to our Randomania friends operating their Dragon Warrior Randomizer tournament here and on RPG Limit Break, pretty much concurrently with the Zima Zone League. You always want to see Metal Miss. Uh, you just hope that you actually get your three heads in before it runs away. I didn't actually see what Moth got from the Twin Hub. Oh, it was the Spoon. Yeah, that's, that's pretty fitting. Interestingly enough, Gaming with a Wraith finishing off the Mega Sisters here is going to put him into go mode with both pieces and the darkness already. Did not fall prey to the Moon's Temptation. So this is great for Wraith. Uh, this puts him in position to be second overall as long as nothing goes lopsided for him. Actually, yeah, that's a great point in chat by Bluen. Uh... We got the, I believe, the Dragon Quest VI final boss the other day. Uh, we got Metal Slime here. We've been seeing a lot of Dragon Quest bosses. Kind of appropriate for this time of year. Definitely interesting to see that in the end, it looks like Wubo decided to go with that Cecil in that middle slot. Well, with these levels and those three uh, melee fighters zerking and two roses to do here four, Uber's not in any real danger here, I think. Worst case scenario would be an exceedingly high big bang roll that knocks out both the roses, but... I mean, it looks like his Cecil just has still maybe an elven bow, maybe that samurai bow on, or maybe some mute arrows. Not doing the most damage, but it looks like Yang, Yang and Edge are putting out a decent amount. And again, he has he has such a lead at this point that as long as this fight goes smoothly, this is this is his race. Gaming with a Wraith getting the, his crystal. Probably going to be heading up to that moon very shortly to take on Zoromus himself. As Rex has finally gotten to that Octomom. Hiding in Rubicante's spot. 
our uh, our overall chains at the start did a great job of putting our characters well on the road to 10 key items to where by the time anyone gets their crystal they will be ready to do a very very quick grind on the moon i think even rex at this point is very close to 10 he's at eight i believe so even just finding that adamant first thing and turning it into the crystal will give him that 10 key items Another big bang coming out against Wu Bear. We'll see if this one uh, tickles or actually stings a bit. 1900 on that bottom, Rosa, uh, with two of them healing. I think he's even started reflecting some whites. I did see Wu Bear had a, uh, had a unihorn in his inventory. I wonder if he was counting the math and intending to go for a refill skip here. Yeah, with that. Yang's throwing Cure Threes instead of swinging away, so it looks like Wu Bear planned Wu Bear planned to do a little bit of that uh the patented Penguinator Unihorn strats. Definitely an interest. Oh nope, the ball's gone. <laughs> it happens. Sometimes you hit yourself in the face. It's always the most unfortunate thing in, in this fight. It's funny. <laughs> Kill off your own character. I don't know whether to pay more respects to that Rosa or to Penguinator who just got murdered in the chat by Rivers McCown. <laughs> uh, Balls, the Unihorn cures a variety of status effects, most notably the Berserk status. So if you want to try to hit the refill skip, with Berserk as part of your plan, well, it can be a vital part of making that happen. Oh, okay. Uh, Wu Bear has flash effects disabled, one of the, uh, the accessibility features, but that metal slime is slowly dropping off the bottom of the screen. Excited crumble, GG's to Wu Bear coming in first place this race with a one hour, 26 minute, 37 second finish time. GG's to Wu Bear. We'll see if we can get him in here for an interview in just a moment. That's happening. We do see Gaming of the Wraith on the moon running down towards the Roma. It's probably going to grind a few levels. Does have a Tella in there, buddy, that it's probably going to be used as an agility anchor. Uh, Mouth has decided Luka Key is now the play. I think after doing everything else, uh, going to be getting their darkness crystal here in short order. And Rex is going to... Yeah, I think to... Marth had literally nowhere else to go at this point. <laughs> yeah. And Rex is finally underground, uh, sadly, with those, those issues earlier. Uh, looks like he might be headed towards a fourth place finish, but going through the checks that he has. So Wraith here in great shape to take second. Uh, still needs to do a little bit of grinding though. Currently only at the low to mid 60s on his team, which you don't want to be fighting Zoromus with that unless you're doing uh, Eddie oh, strats, Eddie. of course. Say low to mid 60s because that would be way too high. And we are joined by Wu Bear, our first place finisher. GG's. Hey, thank you. Hello. Uh, so, first question uh, why do you hate the Fame Arch bosses? <laughs> uh, Leviathan's, like, in my opinion, the hardest boss in the game. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I just don't like doing them. So, mostly Leviathan. I'm sure it's not too bad usually, but, yeah. Not legit. I ask you that specifically because we did have at least one of our featured runners uh, had a little bit of difficulty with some of the fights there. So uh, managing to escape those unscathed uh, did great things for you. Uh, getting to 10 key items and everything. Uh, how did you feel when you realized you had overlooked your rat tail? I, <laughs> yeah, I was, that was about the time that I was doing uh, the hook boss and I looked at my inventory and I'm like, oh, I have a... The rat tail there and hook obviously so i didn't have that marked down on my on my tracker at all so that was kind of silly but gotcha yeah, so you at least noticed up, uh... it 
Okay, so because we we thought you did may not, might not have noticed it until after you'd come back up and you were shopping an agart, in which case you would have already gotten your magma key, so no worries. But to notice it during the fight, ooh. yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's when as soon as I got on the ground, I saw magma key. I'm like, okay, it wasn't too bad, but still, it was um, I don't yeah, I don't even know where I got that from. It was just sitting there. I'm like, cool. Hey, it all worked out for you. Uh, have you been practicing those unihorn strats, like counting your damage no. regularly, or did you just try to do that on the fly? No, I, I just kind of did that on the fly, um, as you can see by... Well, I, I guess it wasn't Unihorn's fault, but I kind of uh, missed that one white. They're very slow, sadly. But, uh... Yeah, yeah I, 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 I would have probably... Um, sorry. sorry go ahead. Oh, no, no, no. It's all you. Yeah, I, I frequently do a lot of reflex shots. It's my preferred kind of thing, so I usually count damage just to uh, do, like, swag dupes to the face or whatever for the finish, right? But So it wasn't too big of a stretch. You just gotta get it before, because as soon as you use the Unihorn, another round of attacks come off from the Berserker, so you have to be careful on that. I, that's messed me up a few times when I first started doing it. Yeah, yeah. Well, wonderfully executed. Fantastic race. Uh, do you have any other thoughts about the seat? Uh, no. Don't think so. <laughs> it was all pretty straightforward, mostly. I, I had a lot of jitters, so I, I, my pathing and movement and stuff was really kind of meh in the beginning, but I settled down a bit, I think. I hope. Are you uh, are you happy or disappointed that Moon wasn't really required this scene? Oh, I was happy. <laughs> I was pretty happy. Um, awesome. Yeah, that's why I, I tried to avoid it. Well, I didn't try to avoid it, but I was looking for darkness anyways. But even if I got darkness early, I probably would have uh, finished off most of Underground. But yeah, then I, I saw... Um, I, I was not expecting Adamant from uh, Dwarf Castle. That's so why I kind of paused. I was like, wait a minute, was that... Was that Adamant? Or was it Legend Sword? One of the other ones, either way. But yeah, that kind of caught me off guard. <laughs> Like, well, cool. wonderfully done. Sub 90 minutes. Always great to see. When's your next upcoming match? Do you have that on the schedule? I think it's the 8th. Um, okay. I think I have the 8th, the 9th, and then the 14th. But um, the 8th one is uh, still tentative, so I'm not sure. But either the 8th or 9th. Gotcha. So upcoming races this week. Uh, good luck on those. Uh, we'll be looking forward to seeing more of these first place finishes from you. Thank you. I hope so. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Bye. Have a good evening. Like, we do have Mouth grinding on doors, leaving the sealed cave while Game of the Wraith is doing these dragons. I don't know if Mouth ever found Siren, so maybe deciding this is the best option to grind. Oh, yeah, that Agart shop again. It's a very tricky one, especially on hook seats. You have Rex in Dwarf Castle, but to get the second part of his crystal, so. Uh, see if he decides to do an early Luca and to finish this race actually not too far behind everyone else. Yeah, this actually, so although Rex did have the misfortune of the, the computer crash, because it led him to do that Odin check before coming underground, kind of making that gamble, it may actually pay off for him. Uh, just, you know, it's a check that you don't necessarily make because you it's early game. It's an end game boss spot, really. One of the bonus summons in the vanilla. Uh, and to actually knock that out, get that legend sword. So Rex Raul, not in bad shape here. Let's see if he uh, does find that darkness pretty quickly hereafter. It's like Moth has... I'm not sure if it has enough levels to take on Zoramis if they're going to be comfortable, but... We'll see once they head to the moon and what they decide to do. It looks like Gaming of the Wraith has decided, I have the levels, it's time to go beat up some of this. Yeah. I don't think Marth could be doing, if you don't have Siren, sometimes, this is actually kind of a strat that I've that I've also seen duplicated uh, from our friends over in the Dragon Warrior Rando community this past week, and that's that if you possibly need just a little more, you know, oomph, get it on your way to the final boss. So Marth could just turn on random encounters and fight whatever uh, runs into him on the way down to the core. Yeah, it's definitely an option. You might also be thinking maybe even the D-Lunar spot for, you know, a good boost of maybe another five levels or so if it's not a two out of a boss, but... Oh, and of course, if he's not seen Sirens, there is still the Hummingway shop on the moon, which we know doesn't hold them today, but uh, it could be lurking there in Marth's mind. He doesn't have the greatest party for a D-Machine grind, normally needing 
one of those characters, unless he did grind to weak on Rosa, uh, Rydia, but I did not see that. Looks like he is going to check this Hummingway shop, hoping for Simon. Gaming with a Wraith, meanwhile entering that Zoroma side as a great anchor in the form of Tella, not too highly leveled, of course. Tella does gain an, kind of an annoying amount of agility if you do let him climb to around level 50 with your other characters. Uh, Wraith did not seem to worry about that though, and with this Edge and Cecil in the front, a couple of good mages in the back row, should be able to manage this Aromas fight fairly well. Yeah, it looks like his Rosa has about 2,500 health, so even just soaking with this Edge and Cecil should make a pretty decent work of this and not have too much trouble. Absolutely. Rex picks up his crystal and now just has to gamble correctly on this darkness location. See if he decides to pop in Luca here on his way towards Feymoch, which I don't know if he's gone in at all at this point. Yeah, so he's seen a dot done. He does have the Luca key. I thought he was going for it. Uh, turn, turn back just for a second to land at Tamra. Oh, is Rex at least giving us? Oh, Rex, of course, with an employment dwarf emote, social and community service manager. Rex, truly a racer of the people. <laughs> Looks like he was about to get mugged by that dwarf in that alleyway, just running right at him. <laughs> he was like, ah, <laughs> get out of the way. <laughs> also finds the ever coveted Bacchus wines in this shop, so probably happy about that. Did Gaming with a Wraith get a Crystal Sword somewhere? Is he doing this damage with that Excal? That uh, is... Not actually sure. I, it's possible just the Power Robe. Uh, he might have found a Zeus Gauntlet or something. Even just the Strength Ring somewhere. Uh, yeah. I'm just saying, those are some potent... Okay, that's definitely Excal damage. Okay, it just had a really high roll a minute ago. If it were Crystal, we'd be seeing like 6,000, 7,000. But still... It's still amazing how much damage that uh, a Pell and Cecil can do show when he has proper equipment. Oh, yeah. Rex, unfortunately, did fly on past the sealed cave where we know the Darkness Crystal is lurking. Uh, so, Fame March will be a little bit of a red herring for him. So. Wraith looks to be in great shape. Marth won't be too far behind. Looks like Marth is still in those low 40s, so... Uh, I was correct. Going to this D-Lunar spot, hoping for not too out of a boss for probably about, about five or six levels at this point. Oh, and he finds a free fight. Oh, and you can life glitch him on top of it. Give, give, give me... Oh my goodness. That's... <laughs> That's 300,000 experience if you do the life glitch. Def definitely a uh, very nice thing to see in this spot, especially if you're looking for experience. Absolutely. Oh, and he even has life. If, if you really want to be greedy, he has life too on his middle Rosa. You, this could have been any of our racers grinds this game right here. Uh... Looks like he's healing that Cecil might be going just to let the Avenger kill off. Not sure if he has any coffins in his inventory. Oh really yeah. Fast. If you don't have coffins, that'll do you. Rock stalling on Wraith's side, that uh that Cecil and that edge have dished out this 120,000 damage super fast. The unfortunate thing for going for life two with an Avenger Cecil, if he kills the other one while you're trying to get that life two off, it's not gonna go well. Yeah, true, true. But Wraith has finished off this Metal Miss fight. Uh, second place, a 1 hour, 38 minute, 18 second finish. Very well done by Gaming with the Wraith, taking these three points towards his league standings. GG to Gaming with the Wraith. Get him in here for an interview. I'll let you take point on this one. Oh no, exactly what I thought might happen happened to Moth. Went for that life too, and in the time, Cecil did another swing and... Should have left him... 
should have left him minied. That would have uh, that would have taken care of that problem. <laughs> getting a glass helm in Yosame for for the troubles. Uh, nice for the edge finally getting one of those weapons. And we are joined by Gaming with a Wraith. Uh, GG on your second place win. Thank you. So uh, how did you feel about the seed kind of forcing you to linearly kind of go through and eventually into that hook? Uh, this is all right. I mean, I wish it would have maybe been a little harder boss in the hook. Just for fun, but it was fine. I don't know if I, are you happy or disappointed that the moon was not in play in this one? Um, that was my next step after Odin, so I'm happy. <laughs> We were a little worried about you, given that uh, most of our other racers got both halves of their crystal before getting the darkness. You were the first one to actually get it before having the rest of go mode. Uh, so you definitely dodged a bullet there. Uh, typically, what makes you decide to wrap up some Earth spots versus going straight for the moon? Um, a lot of it's just like... I'm going to say it's just a guess, but it's not. I just kind of look at like what I've got left try to think how much time I think it'll take me versus how much time it's going to go to the moon and grind up a little bit because at that point I would have been under level a little bit to get some of the uh, end spots and then from there I was like eh, I just if it if I feel like it's going to take me too long I'll just keep going earth if not I'll just go right moon Fair enough well it looks like your instincts proved right this time you know getting you both halves of that crystal before you went up uh, and getting you into a good position to get that second place. When is your next match, Gaming with a Wraith? Uh, next Saturday at 2.30, I want to say. Something like that. Uh, nope, 10 a.m. I'm way off. Oh, early morning. <laughs> get, yeah. get it in there. Oh, yep, totally... I got a Magus match next weekend, so... I'm totally oh. in that race, aren't I? Yep. Yep. <laughs> We're in that being... one. Y'all yeah. are being too generous to him. Make him race at, like, 4 a.m. his time. He d he doesn't need the help. He's good enough. I mean, I, 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 w I like it to be... I like it to be tough. I mean, I, I want a good race. That's... The thing I care about is it's a good race, it's entertaining for everybody to watch, and everybody has fun. So that that's me. Hey, if we put it on Megas this time, that means he can't complain if he loses. But if we do, we have an excuse. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> that is very true. Touche. Touche, y'all. Touche. Well, GG's again on your second place. We'll be. I'm really looking forward to that race next Saturday. I'll wake up nice and bright and early in Bushy Tail for that one. So good luck to both of you on it. I'm looking forward to, uh, to seeing that one live awesome thank you take care yeah, yeah looks like we have mouth in the metal bus fight now uh sadly rex it looks like forgot to hourglass the dolls and took out all the small ones forming the big doll the first time Or could he just he, earlier in the seed? We did n mention that the first two sets of hourglasses for sale were hourglass threes and hourglass twos, which are both a little pricey and kind of tricky to afford in the early game. So it may have been that Rex just put off buying them, intending to get them later, and never got around to it. Could that be what happened? It's possible, I and mean, maybe that he doesn't have any because he we do see that big doll popping up again on his screen. Could be doing kind of a uh, a cute little grind here. Uh, I see that he is at 10 key items, so theoretically you could just deal with the dolls over and over and get your XP this way. I don't think it's that effective at the Leviathan spot, though. Nah, I, I don't foresee it being the most effective experience grind, probably just trying to make his way through this. Yeah, I know Simbu has had to do that in a Kata seed before. But here, yeah, probably not the, the, the best option. Cata seeds are definitely a whole different beast of a, of a run. Basically taking, getting rid of all of your, you know, familiar and easy thing. But he does take out the big doll, does get himself a few levels for his troubles.
There's the Excalibur for Rex Raul. A uh, nice little power boost to his Cecil. We'll see if he, yeah, walking out to keep it. Probably gonna go heal up before trying to take on that Odin spot if he does decide that that is the play. And Marth mistimed that nerf, apparently. The vampire item, uh, it's a surprisingly narrow window to actually nerf those big bangs. And that one looked to be full power. Uh, you can always tell if you've properly nerfed a big bang because the maximum damage it can deal is 1,200 if nerfed. So if you're still getting those 1,700s and 1,800s, your timing was a little off. Yeah, now he's berserked his last body member again. And it looks like there's a shake for another big bang on its way. Yeah, Marth really has to hope to get this kill before the Big Bang comes out. A Big Bang into a Meteo would be... Oh, here it comes. Unfortunately for... Uh, Marth going to probably take a... Taking a dive on this attempt. We'll Ooh, see if he that was one of the That was one of the big ones, too. Over 2,000 damage to each of his surviving characters. Rough. Yeah, just looking at his characters. Like, his Rosas are level 45, 46, so mid 40s a little high 40s for some of his other characters so definitely on on the lower end for especially if you don't get those nerfs off that can be a problem rex meanwhile dealing with this odin spot just got the zerk up on his young which i'm not sure if his has a a thunderclaw or not That Rosa definitely not using lightning arrows. That was only 600 from her bow. And just popped a Bacchus with Cecil as well. The Sylph Summon coming out. Now the Excal might put Rex over the top on damage here. Let's see if he can finish this off before the swing comes. If this Odin does get it off, his Yang is only doing about 1800 damage. Yeah, that's no Thunderclaw then. It looked like a fire and an ice maybe based on the, uh, the character animation. Maybe cutting it a little close here. Odin could take out his party at any point. There we go. Pow. Marth, meanwhile, coming in for a second go here. Rex turning the battle speed down to six. Probably going to head back into this fight and see if he can finish it off. I didn't actually see him. Not sure if he tried to silk web him the first time to make him slower, but... like that is the action he's going to take, throwing off that soul grab, going to box us up his characters again and see if Odin is slow enough that he can take him out before dealing that final blow. Yeah, Rex is in pretty good shape here in this fight, aside from, you know, how quickly that came out. Uh, his young can actually survive a punched face. His other characters, who are really important to doing DPS, are all in the back row. So... Not too bad here, but of course, if you don't get that damage pumping out, you know, ASAP, that Zentetsu Ken is going to come out for about 3,500 damage and knock the entire party down. Looks like he's got his entire party Bacchus up at this point, minus that video, he's throwing at those sylphs. Mm -hmm, Chokasura, this is a Sura spot. So very fast, very high magic attack, only 25,000 HP. Oh, goodbye, Rydia. But again, not having that that Thunderclaw that Marth had is making this a little, a little slower for Rex. With the Silk Web plus the Bacchus Wines, it, it, this is it's looking okay. Can we get enough more enough extra hits in here to finish it off? We have a couple more rounds of attacks once the sword goes up. Is Cecil and Edge doing the bulk of the damage here? Well, supplemented by Rosa Young, but... There we go! Okay. 
So nice. well done by Rex. Of course, not the passage to the moon that he needs, but still a very well executed fight. Getting himself that twin hub, which we know leads to a spoon. Uh, hopefully he'll be checking out this Luca cave pretty quickly to find that darkness crystal. Like that is his next stop, so pretty quick Rex will be grabbing that darkness crystal and then on his way to grind and fight the Romans himself. Excellent. Great to see this check on Rex's part. Uh, gonna put him back on the road to redemption here. Meanwhile, Marth over here in the Zeromas fight. Is he doing Quint Zerker st strats here? I I think he might be. Yeah, because I saw him swap the Avenger onto Cecil, and those roses, yeah, there's not been a command menu <laughs> pop up in a while here. So, Marth, better hope his DPS is strong enough. If we get back to those big bangs again, well, we saw what happened last fight. Get a shake there. Oh, see how this goes. Pepita asking in chat, where was the pass? Uh, we currently don't know. It's not included in the version 0.3.8 spoiler log. So there's no real way to know short of loading up your seed and going back in there and hunting it down. Yeah, at this point, it's, it's everything but the D-Lunars, Bahamut, and I guess Tower Super Cannon slot left. Yeah, well, I, I don't think anyone any of those Ogopogo or Plague either. I think the only Lunar boss we saw was that, uh, was the Lunar Dragon spot, right? Yeah, that's why I said anything but that one. Oh, anything but that. I apologize. Yeah. So the all the other Lunar spots and Tower Key. Uh-oh. Rocks are falling. Does Yang have enough here? Yang usually has low magic evade. He may not be able to dodge these Meteos like a lot of people can thing is did he get him low enough to trigger uh uh unfortunately that meteor is going to take out young and earth is going to have to take another attempt at this aromas fight well, Actually, Rex is... <laughs> marth has forfeited uh choosing not to go on getting a little salty over these fights cannot fault him for that at all but this gives Rex uh, the opportunity to claim third. As long as Rex finishes off this seed, he will be awarded third place and the two points. That's unfortunate to see, but sometimes you just don't have the, the willpower to go through. Both, yeah, as when we say, he might have other commitments that time is a little bit of a factor, so. We do have Rex fighting this karate man taking him out, has his darkness crystal, and should hopefully be going up to the moon pretty quickly to get to his own Zoroma's fight. Moving that warp up in Iridia's spell list. Going to use that to accelerate leaving the cave. You can't exit. You can warp, though. Which, if you menu perfectly, according to uh, Vanilla and Free Enterprise runner Obda Jr., you will save time. But having to go down to this spot, there may be some floors where it'd be better just run it rather than uh, cast it. I know why Pop I always it. end up just warping the entire way out. <laughs> Pretty sure Rex saw the sirens and probably has some, so I'll be seeing him scrambling up either some eggs here or some dragons on the moon, depending. He's throwing a heroin on Rydia. He might have a dragon whip? Yeah, I think he saved that dragon whip, so this puts her into a great spot for being uh, 
the the sous chef preparing all the omelets for this team to devour on their way to the moon. Having 10 key items, if you can one-shot these, I I think they are faster than the the gold dragons. Uh, Simbu's done a lot of work on that, timing it out to see exactly which is faster. So if you have enough sirens, uh, this is probably better for this team. If we did have a cane to use that dragoon spear, the edge might go to lunar dragons, especially once he gets to where he can one-shot them. But as this is, that, that Rydia with that whip and heroin rope is gonna just scramble eggs one after another. Uh, he may still be on battle speed six from that Odin fight. Oh yeah, he turned it down to six for Odin. Uh-oh. There's a reason I have a command set up in my channel explicitly for this, because I will do that kind of battle speed manipulation for rude bosses. And then for the next five or six bosses, I'll be like, oh, I forgot to turn my battle speed back up. And then I get something good from that fight, and so I forget to turn it up again. And then it just, it ends up in like a five minute time loss. It's terrible. I mean, one of the other factors for if you're going to say the gold dragons is if you have like a lower character to slingshot, it's better to do a gold dragon fight with 180k than an egg. Oh yeah. But we will see what Rex decides he wants to grind up to. If he's watching the SRL chat, he knows at this point he just needs to finish this run. So we're probably just going to something that he's comfortable with. Yeah. Uh, sitting on that, that GP screen there, though. Re Re you okay, Rex? Well, we know that his computer's not dead because they are still doing the animation. Maybe it's a controller death issue? It's not anything too serious. We saw him pause a little earlier after coming back, so. Come on, y'all. You, you gotta take your bathroom breaks during the gauntlet fight. You put something heavy on your A button, you go to the restroom, you come back and the gauntlet's done. <laughs> and I guess while we're waiting here, we can announce a couple of the next upcoming races. So we do have two more races tomorrow. Uh, the first one between Night Dew, Chokosora, Pizza 34, and Big Dunker at 2 p.m. That'll be on RPG Limit Break. And then at 12.30, why is that after another schedule? Oh, whatever. At 12.30, we actually have Dusty Griff, Swimmy Leone, Error, and Penguinator. So, two yeah, great races tomorrow as well. Uh, I don't, the, the person who maintains the site has been alerted <laughs> to the ordering issue. But yeah, it, it's not arming anything. But yeah, uh, match at 12.30 Eastern and 2 o'clock Eastern. Both going to be very, very good races. back grinding these eggs so we have almost at least one to two races a day for the next week almost it looks like definitely a lot of a lot more races to come and a lot more exciting yeah we had that <laughs> we had that brief pause thursday and friday and then all of a sudden boom 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 incoming Okay. <laughs> Rex is on the move. I, I was worried for a moment. Okay, there we go. Pause in the air for a second as well, so. Oh. <laughs> I, I love that there's roughly, like, two tiles around the, the crater that you can actually land on, and I always love when I actually hit one of those. Like, you know, bonking is annoying enough, but to actually land fully, it's always just oh, grumble, grumble, grumble. I've landed on those more times than I can count.
Yeah, looks like he's heading up to the moon. Hopefully, being a Zero must fight pretty quickly here and make quick work. Yeah, a little chat regarding the D machine grind in chat. Yeah, it's kind of a it's kind of a balance there, Gambit. Uh, if you go in lower level, it's easier to make up for the percentage damage that the flame and the beams do to you. But on the other hand, it's really, really great if you do have your median 10 levels above your two baby characters, because that triple XP slingshot is so nice with the D-Machine grind. Yeah, you can definitely get a really powerful character really quickly in one fight. Another thank you will go out to our wonderful restream team. So we have Nerm doing the, the restream and Pidge01 doing our tracking for us tonight. And thank you, Inveterable, for kind of jumping in here last second to do commentary with me. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Huge shout out to the initial volunteer who was ready to go, Stormy Galaxies. Just had a few internet issues. It, it happens to everyone. We've all been there. Uh, so shout out, to the, shout out to them for being the initial volunteer. But, you know, I'm not going to leave you hanging, Gobahi. I got you, man. Shout out to everyone watching while I was scrambling at the beginning trying to figure it out as well. <laughs> I keep hearing voices and they keep vanishing. <laughs> what is going on? So this sit here is kind of a ready-made agility anchor if Rex wants him, but having already done some grinding on the team, I'm wondering uh, what he'll choose to go with for his final party. Looks like he's oh. going to drop that Udia and use Sid as an anchor here. There you go. Starting agility of nine, you could even probably let him have a couple fights just to get his HP up and still be a great anchor. Or if you're happy with the team, let it roll. Now, did you see exactly what level he got up to with those eggs? Do you think he intends to do a little more grinding here, or is he about ready? I'm not 100% what I saw. Uh, got a little distracted with, with uh, things. But he yeah. should be at a good enough level that he doesn't need to do any more. Uh, he may decide, you know, a couple levels to Sid are, are nice, but he should be able to just go straight in with... to do it anywhere this is the floor so it looks like he should be comfortable with his levels i'm just gonna head straight over to the fight probably make a save right before oh yeah i mean rex has the excal on cecil he's got decent levels on yang his edge has at least one ninja sword if not multiple his rosa knows cure for it looks like should be good to go high 40s 47 to 48 on most of his characters there so yeah, 48 on Rosa would mean she even knows white on top of all that, uh, if he wants to do a little hybrid strats. Uh, if not, this team is more than equipped to just punch Zeromus into oblivion. And here we go, starting that Zeromus fight. Once more into the breach. One more Metal Slime. Let's get this 255 XP and call it a day. I guess here is we're just going to see the, the classic three Zerker. I doubt Sid will do much of anything in this fight, but fall over eventually. He might throw a Silk Web. You don't know. <laughs> nah. Uh, yeah. 
he of course does get the privilege of throwing the crystal just because of how bizarre the ATV actually operates in this final fight. I also do get the final photo of Yang No at IZ. <laughs> oh, does he now? <laughs> Pulling up those jugs of wine so they're ready for the entire team to take advantage of. And I'm gonna drink and get angry here. <laughs> Great party arrangement here. The Cecil and the Edge both back row glitched, and not just that, but Cecil, Edge, and Yang all drinking with their initial turns, one right after the other. Should be zero chance of the Silk I'm missing, as we already see these Berserkers hitting Zeromis, so. Yeah. That shit came out pretty quickly, though, so. The one concern I'd have here would be if the Nuke and the Big Bang both came out on Rosa, but Young can definitely tank that. We'll still have well over 1200 HP after the Nuke. No problem here. Yeah, managing to get that Cure 3 off with the Sid as well. He should be in no danger here at this point from this Big Bang. Oh yeah, just let the Zerker swing. Cure 4 with Rosa as necessary. Uh, GG's incoming, I believe. Be interesting to see if he decides to try nerfing any future Big Bangs if they do come out. Uh, his Rosa only has just over 2,000 health, so... Yeah, but I believe she's wearing that Sorcerer robe, so she should have very good uh, Magic Evade and Magic Defense. I think he might have targeted that Cure 4 at only Sid. Yeah. It went off and I think it whiffed, so he's gonna have to throw that one out again. And then nearly queuing up a Cure 1. Whew, okay. Good, very good of Rex to notice that one. In spite of, you know, Rose's levels, a four-way Cure 1 won't do a lot of a lot of good here. And his body healed. Plenty of time left here. Oh, yeah. And, of course, the Silkweb on Zeromus doing... The full team doing... What is this? A about uh, 9,200 per per group attack. And also you get, I believe, I mean, you get a lot of them between Zeromus actions, so. Yeah. Honestly, if... go ahead. I was gonna say, definitely dishing it out. Like this second Big Bang might actually happen after the, the health refill. Uh, could happen anytime here, uh, we'll see. Yeah, picking up the Sid. Great call here. Made it very easy for Rex to anchor this party. Uh, I think that was one thing that we may have seen uh, some of our other racers having a difficulty with during the Zeromus fight. Just not having agility really set up to to be taken advantage of. And Sid definitely solves that issue. Definitely. Yeah. And see that Big Bang only hitting Rosa for about 1,500, so yeah. that's plenty to defense. And as long as Rex gets enough damage into interface to oh my goodness, already in Medio, forget that. I was going to be like, as long as you keep it to the 8 hits and not the 9 hit Big Bangs, you're all set. But not even an issue, it's just out so much damage already. And with that we see the flash, and Rex Roll has finished in 3rd place with a time of 2 hours, 8 minutes, and 4 seconds. So GG to Rex, you know, PC issues, but coming back, sticking it out, and getting the seed done. We're going to see if Rex would like to be interviewed. Uh, he should be joining us in just a moment. And we are now joined by Rex Rule. Uh, congratulations on your third place finish. Uh, fortunately, you had some tech issues again. Yeah, I don't know. My computer doesn't seem to like this league, or at least the round of 32. It, I was fine during the prelims, the qualifiers, but I don't know what's going on now. Well, you did still end up pulling off a third place finish, so you're getting two points towards the league. Uh, and more importantly, uh, as is consistent with your brand, uh, <laughs> I believe you were the only one of the four racers to give us that 
temp job dwarf validation. So, oh, well, then I'm the real winner. Yeah, no, <laughs> number one in the fans' hearts for that reason, if nothing else. Uh, I was considering also uh, because, like, I had seen uh, Marth uh, forfeit, and so I knew basically in order to get third place, all I needed to do was finish. I was I considered going to music because I didn't know whether or not anybody else had gone that way because clearly it wasn't required. Uh, but the I didn't actually think about that till I was in the lunar subterranean. I'm like, I'm not going to fly all the way back just for that. <laughs> you don't want to do a 399, 399 chess collection, <laughs> show us who's at the giant. <laughs> like... I could have I done whatever I wanted, but that would be the only thing that I would really consider. So. <laughs> well, fortunately, we did hear the music. It was some good. It was a great Final Fantasy tactics tune. So good. Yeah. Then I don't feel like I, I uh, left something on the table. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But uh, Gigi was sticking with it. Uh, do you know when your next match is? Uh, my next match is uh, on the 7th, and that'll be my last one. You've, this was your third one already? Oh, yeah. Wow. You, you, I think you are on your way to being the first one of the entire league to wrap up all of their races. That's yeah, a... that might be so. I, uh, and then uh, everybody can go ahead and sail their scores way ahead of me, because I have not... These tech issues have made it so that I haven't accumulated a lot of points. But at, right now, I'm just feeling like, once again, it's so great to be a, to be a part of this round of 32 and to have qualified for that. Uh, is It was more than I expected going into this whole thing. So right now, it's all gravy, and I'm still having a blast, whether or not I'm having... Like, the tech issue is aside, because nobody likes to deal with them. Uh, other than that, I'm loving being uh, in this league, and uh, both participating in it and watching it has been great. Honestly, we can't ask for much more than that. Like, at the end of the day, it's a game. If you're not playing and having fun or watching and having fun, what's the point? Exactly, yeah. Well, and then there's little things like... Uh, the, the last time I had tech issues, I was having a really good run. This time, I started out okay, I guess, but the Cal Breda fight, oh man. I thought I had another Hourglass 2. I thought I had picked up two Hourglass 3s and an Hourglass 2 in chests, and I had used the two Hourglass 3s. So I thought I had one Hourglass left, and I didn't. And so I had to face the big doll twice in one fight. Like, oh, come on. Yeah, it's a little unfortunate, but you did manage to get through the big doll and eventually get your Excalibur from it. Yeah. Yep, yes. it was... I'm glad the moon also... wasn't required because it was... <laughs> that would have been a lot long time. <laughs> Definitely. I mean, beyond the tech issues that, you know, maybe forced you to only be able to have that third spot due to a forfeit, what do you what do you feel went went good about the seed or what didn't quite so good? Um, I think like mostly the um uh the good stuff was um like going to um the Odin spot before going underground and finding the Mega Sisters there, being able to beat them, and uh, getting the, I think it was the, I don't remember if it was a Legend or Adamant, but one of those from that place. So that was great. Uh, and then the not so great, the thing that really strict, uh, sticks in me is that uh, that uh, Calvarita fight, so. Yeah, fair enough. I think you were the only one to do that Odin spot before going underground, but I mean, it might have also been, you know, after your tech issues, we were wondering if maybe it was kind of a gamble, hoping Maybe a bag key or something would be there. That was exactly it. Uh, but it was also good when it was a go mode item because that's one that, especially when you get an early Baron key, if you dive Baron early, which I think most people do, that Odin spot can sometimes be forgotten until after a moon clear or something. So when I saw that, I'm like, I might be able to sneak back into this. Uh, as it turns out, it seems like Wu Bear did a good job of clearing everything anyway. So, um, yeah. Or at least I assume... Either that or got lucky and went to the right places at the right time, so, yeah. <laughs> so you had a very good time. Excellent. Well, we'll be looking forward to your fourth match coming up this week. Uh, and for now, I think we are about ready to wrap today. Remember, tomorrow we do have two matches, one at 12.30 p.m. Eastern in the afternoon on the Free Enterprise channel, and one at 2 p.m. in the afternoon on RPG Limit Break. Uh, so come out for both those matches if you need more free enterprise in your life and uh you totally do uh kabahi you have anything else for us this afternoon ah no i believe that is there anything just 
thank you everyone for watching. Thanks for everyone behind the scenes, uh, Restreamer Nurm, uh, Tracker Pidge, and all our runners for a good race. Yeah, make sure you give the runners and the commentary team a follow if you have a moment. In the meantime, we are going to send you all over to Dusty Griff, great runner of the game, a league participant who is currently doing some practice. So we're going to keep that rolling this evening. And everyone, just have a good night.